derivatives shouldn't be as difficult as people think it is right off the bat. This is, now I've made you think it's going to be hard. It's not going to be hard. But some people, they say, oh yeah, I get it, the chain really got to do the derivative, the inside, the outside, all that stuff. But then as soon as you give them something different like this, they resort back to, I don't know, where they panic. Okay, you don't want to panic and just start doing silly stuff. If I want to know the derivative of this function here, as in I want to know what h prime at 1 is, for some reason people think, okay, it's the derivative of the outside, so it's f prime at 1, and then i got to do the derivative of the inside, it's g prime at 1. It's not that, okay? It's not f prime at 1 times g prime at 1. Think about what it is here if we have h of x. How would you write the chain rule for this particular function up here? It's, you got to look at the derivative of the outside, but ignoring what's inside. It's f prime with what's inside there. g of x, right? It's not just f prime of x, it's f prime of g of x. And then what do I do? No, I'm not doing g prime of x, it's f prime at g of x. Times g prime of x, right? Remember that when it was, if it was sine of x to the fifth, first you say it's cosine of x to the fifth. Did we did we write the derivative of the inside function first? No, and then you do the derivative of the inside function. Okay, so what you do here is you do f prime as it relates to g of x. The variable there is g of x, not x. So when you do this, this should be h prime at what? g of 1, right? It should be h prime at g of 1 times, not h prime, sorry, f prime. f prime at g of 1. Not, h, not f prime at g prime of 1. Just f prime at whatever g of 1 is here. And then what's on the end here? g prime at 1. Should we make this different colors here to make it easier? How about if we make this plum? And we make this... I don't, I don't know why I do things like this, like as if you're not distractible enough already. <laughs> Let's pause for color selection. What happened to that G of 1? It's all... That, what's, what's happening with this? This is all hollow here now. What is this, white? Light orange is like nothing there. Well, I've obviously screwed it up with trying to pick a color. Just for that, it's brown. Okay, there we go. Dark, weird, purple, and brown. No, there's not that. All, there's not all those options in this program. I, I'm glad I have. Well, I would suggest you do this in two stages to avoid problems. I would suggest you say f prime at figure out what g of one is. What's g of one? We have to look on the table here. G of one. Here's g of x. And this is x. It's not a very well-made table, but I'm assuming this is the x values here. So at g of 1, here's g. Of, here's 1, right? We need this. This is going to be 3, right? So this is 3 here. And we need to multiply that by g prime at 1. f prime at 3 times g prime at 1. I know that's troubling because you're looking for the derivative of h at 1. But then you're starting to evaluate derivatives at 3, and people feel uncomfortable with that. That would be no different. Let's go back here for a second. That would be no different than this. Because if you were trying to do this and you said it's it's cos of x to the fifth times 5x to the fourth, if you wanted to know what that was at x equals 1, you'd put a 1 in here and figure out what this is. That's a very bad choice. <laughs> Uh, let's say you put a 2 in there. You, you figure out what 5 times 2 to the 4th is, but if you put a 2 in there, you don't, you're not evaluating cosine at 2, you're evaluating cosine at whatever 2 to the 5th is. 
it's going to be a different value in here. Right? Instead of 2, it would be 2 to the 5th, which is 32. Instead of a 1 in here, it's whatever g of 1 is, which is 3. Then f prime at 3, we've got to look that up on the table. The table is, uh, where are we looking here? 3 is there. Uh, we need f prime. Here's f prime. So I'm looking at this value, which is 8. And then g prime at 1 is, what's g prime at 1? Here's 1. Here's g prime. So it's 5. Somebody who said before that it's 40? Yes. I was right. Can you do the second one, please? You do the second one so that it uh, turns out nice and you get the right answer. I will make that smaller. Okay. What we're saying here is if this is a function, like if this is this whole thing is called h of x, what's h prime of x? That's what we're asking here. If it's two, if it's two functions that are added together, you just do them separately, right? This is two times f prime of x. So if it's at two, it's two times f prime of two plus g prime at 2. I'll let you fill in the values and you can figure it out. If, if this is the product here, it's f prime at 3 times g at 3 plus f at 3 times g prime at 3. Right? And I'll let you fill out those values. If you have the quotient rule, same thing, right? f prime at 2 times g at 2 minus f at 2 times g prime at 2 divided by g at 2 squared. And you can figure out what the actual number is. Here's where you start needing the chain rule. If this is called h of x, if this function is called h of x, then h prime of x is f prime at g of 2 times g prime at 2. So in other words, I mean, this is like the thing you did before here, right? Uh, f prime at, what is g of 2? Is it 4 thirds? Is g of 2 4 thirds? Should I look back at this thing here? Oh, not 4 thirds? G of 2 is 2, okay. And G prime of 2 is, when you look back at the table, G prime of 2 is negative 3. Well, we could leave it like this for a second. Negative 3. It is, I know, we got the windows open. Our, our, uh, don't, <laughs> uh, can I, I don't know why I, I figured I'd do this one, actually work it out for you. We need F prime at 2, is that right? So this is 1 third. So this is negative 3 thirds. Or negative 1, is that right? Anybody agree with that? Okay. Um, slightly. That is D. Yep. Uh, I do want to look at this one because some people, they understand when it says f of g of x, but they don't realize this is a composition of functions. If you wrote it the way the calculator would write it, as in, if you're calling this h, this is like square root of f of x. It's, it's a composition of functions. It's the square root of f of x. So you need to do the square root of square root of something and then the derivative. So it's whatever the square, whatever the derivative of square root of something is, what's the derivative of square root of something? That one you probably want to learn. It's 1 over 2 times square root of that something. You can go through the same series of steps every time if you want. Square root of x, you can think, okay, that's like x to the 1 half. So it's like 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is like 1 half times 1 over x to the 1 half, which is like 1 half times 1 over square root of x, 
which is like 1 over 2 root x. You can go through that set of steps every single time, right? Probably once you go through that set of steps enough times, you, especially with photographic memories, will remember that the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay? Whether you have to go through that or not doesn't matter to me. But at, at, at this point, I need to stop this. 